Hi, Norman from Tormark, and today we're going to do a video on using a bar puller with your 15L Slant Pro lathe that we've got here. A bar puller is a tool that you'd use when you're running a larger run of parts, maybe 50, 100, 200, however many it is. So you're going to use an automatic collet closer like we have on this machine here. At the end of the program, you're going to part the part off, and then you're going to use the bar puller to open the collet, pull the bar forward, however much distance you need, close the collet, and then you'll restart the program over again. And you'll just continuously do that for however many parts you have in that bar until you'd have to change out the bar itself. So we have two versions of the bar puller, one with a traditional three quarter inch stick mount here. On a 15L, you can mount this on the lower portion of the X slide if you have a quick change tool post. The other version we have has a three quarter inch round shank that you would put in a boring bar holder like we have mounted here. Either version has the exact same functionality. It's just the standard three quarter inch shank version. You can install it in a turret, but the body of the bar puller itself actually covers up the screws so you can't tighten it down. The bar puller is a tool just like any other. So you do have to set your tool offsets. You're going to set your Z offset to the front, roll, front of the rollers here. So this doesn't have to be terribly precise. Generally what I do is I just set Z0 on the end of my part and I just line it up by eye. Um, you can use a, a paper shim as well if you want. The X axis is a little bit different from most of your other tools because it's, it's going to open up um, as you try to go onto it. So you can't just bump up against your material like you normally would. So what you do for setting your x-axis offset is you're going to go off the center of the rollers as your zero point because as you go on the bar you want the to be on the center of the rollers so what you're going to do is you're going to have an offset from the end of the rollers um, just based on the size of the roller that's 0.531 inches then you're going to use some piece of material uh, you don't want to use a paper shim because you do need it to be stiff enough and long enough to actually be put against your material and you want it to be long enough that it goes across both rollers here so you're just trying to jog it in and just like if you were using a piece of paper you're just wiggling it until you're not able to wiggle it anymore now it's very very tight when i try to wiggle my piece of material here so we're gonna take that offset of 0.531 inches. My material in this case is a quarter inch thick. And we're gonna take the radius of the material we have clamped in our collet. This is 5 eighths material. 0.531, add in my material, 0.25. I'm going to add the bar itself, 0.3125. And that gives us a value of 1.0935. We multiply that by two to get our diameter. So 2.187 is our value here. So if we see our current position, we are off a little bit. So I'm going to go to our offsets page. It happens to be tool one that I have this bar puller installed in. So 2.187. And we enter our value there to set our tool offset appropriately. So not any different from any other tool other than the calculation for the offset there. For actually using the bar puller, we have a program uh, that we wrote. It's just this bar underscore puller routine. And it has a couple of arguments that you're going to give it to tell it where exactly to go. So our first argument on the left here, this is the tool number that the bar puller is. So it would change to the bar puller and then carry out the rest of the program. Our second argument, which I have as 0.625 here, that's the diameter of our material. Our third argument is the coordinate in Z that we're going to go to in order to have the bar puller move down on the material. So after you cut off the end of the material, you do have to go a bit further, generally about three, of it, three eighths of an inch just to make sure you have most of the wheels in contact with material. 
Our fourth argument, which we have as negative 0.375 here, is how far are we going to pull back? So this is the difference between these two arguments is the total distance that you're pulling the bar out. And both of these are in absolute coordinates for our z-axis. Our fifth argument is either going to be 0 or 1. This is telling the routine whether we have the bar puller mounted in the turret with 0 or mounted on a quick change tool post if it was 1. So this line right here is all you need to enter into your program in order to run the um, bar puller. If you're using conversational like I am with this program here, this is just cutting off the material just for the demo purposes. We would go to our program here, and it's easiest to have the bar puller uh, call in a separate program. So I made this other program here just called bar puller call, and the only thing it has in there is this line that I was just showing on our main screen. So if I go to our conversational menu, I hit insert file here, and told it to insert this file. And so if we look at our code, we add a couple comments around it, but we just have that line there. So if we run this, then we can show you how that routine will end up looking on the part. So that program just runs one time, rather than the 100, 200, however many you need for that bar. So if we want the program to continuously run for however many parts we need it to, there's a couple things we can add to the program. So I'm going to just edit it. And we want to add an M99 loop with a loop counter to tell it how many times to run. So we're going to start that with M98 and then a P value, I usually just use 100, and then an L argument. L will tell it how many times to actually run this before we just exit out of the program and continue on with whatever's next. In our case, this is going to be the entire program, so all we're going to put after it is M30 to tell it to stop. Then because we are defining our subprogram with P, we need to define that subprogram, which I just put below it, to say everything after this which is the normal start of our program, is in that subprogram. And then at the very end, we change our M30 to M99 to say this is the end of our subprogram. So we're going to loop through what was the entirety of our program and our bar puller call. And once we hit the end of it, we're just going to repeat the entire thing, in this case, for 20 times. After that, we'll stop the machine. So some very simple code you can add to just run everything in a loop. For the video purposes, I'm just going to set it to 3 so we can show that it does continue on. And the program will run exactly as it did before, just in this case, three times. All right, so our three parts just finished. And in this case, we just have our bar left here, but normally you just have a small remnant. So you take that out and then just be able to load another bar into the spindle of your machine and then start the entire process all over again. This bar polar program that we are using here, we are going to add that into a future update of PathPilot. Until then, we are also going to post it on our forums, so you can download it from there. And then you would put it on the subroutine folder on your machine, right here. You can see this is just the only program I have in here at the moment. But once you have the program in your subroutine folder, then you would just need to add it into your program along with an M99 loop like we already described. But then you can just add it in and use a bar puller for automatic production on your 15L. So I hope that's helpful. If you guys have any questions, we'd be more than willing to answer them for you. You can always give us a call at 608-849-8381 or put in a tech support ticket and we'd be able to answer through that method as well. Mm -hmm.